It is September 2nd, 2023. This is Sergeant Sarah Ashton Cirillo of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, and you're watching Ukraine in the Know, live and direct from the Territorial Defense Forces Media Studios in Kyiv. We have a show today that is focused on Russian atrocities, Russian war crimes, and Russian terrorism, and not just the bloody and gory kind. Make sure to bookmark, repost, and like this broadcast if you want the world to get a breakdown of how we know Russia is lying to the globe. First, however, I will start at the front lines with a report from Deputy Defense Minister Hannah Maller that appeared yesterday evening on the national broadcast of the television marathon. Deputy Defense Minister Maller confirmed that despite back and forth battles in the Bakhmut direction, and heavy, heavy attacks by the Russian invaders, we are still finding success in a very hot area. We can also report continued success south of, Rob of Robotne and in the direction of Tokmak and Tavria. Ultimately, liberation is Ukraine and a return to the country's 1991 borders are assured, along with the implementation of President Zelensky's 10-point peace formula However, the question is, how quickly do we achieve it? In our hearts and souls, we understand the war could be finished by the end of the year and a complete return of Ukraine's territory and the freedom for all Ukrainians could be had. We continue to call on our Western partners and all those who support us to provide us the weapons necessary to finally and totally destroy the Russian enemies. Speaking of the Russian enemy, I posted on my Twitter feed today the picture of the V troop showing the firing of an S-60 cannon that appears to come from the 1950s. People had questioned whether we were able to break Russia's defensive lines. Over and over again, our leaders in both civilian government and military command implored the world to understand we were taking upon a steady pace putting the lives of Ukrainian soldiers and civilians above a few hundred meters on a map. Now that we have reached the second line of Russian defenses in some areas, the world is starting to understand that Ukrainian plans had worked and will continue to work. Now, as I said, the focus on Russian terrorism. Yesterday was the day of knowledge in Ukraine, including in the temporarily occupied areas of the Donbass. Word came from Donetsk Oblast that those parents who refused to send their children to Russian Federation-backed re-education camps sponsored by Putin's political party, United Russia, were visited by the secret police of the Russian state, the FSB. Excuse me, as every story that comes out just enrages us more and more. And it should enrage the globe more and more as well. Along with this fact, almost 400 children have been found to have been illegally adopted by Russian families. Almost 400 kidnapped Ukrainian children are now living with Russian families through an illegal adoption process, making it even more difficult to rescue these kids from the clutches of Russian evil. And speaking of Russian evil, in her son Oblast this afternoon, guided bombs fell upon civilians, killing several and injuring others. Ultimately, Russian terrorism continues day by day in both the psychological aspect, the legal aspect, and the physical aspect, it totals up to a complete attempt to carry out a genocide against the Ukrainian people as they have attempted to carry out genocides in the past against Crimean Tatars and others. On a happier, stronger, more forceful note, as I stated yesterday when discussing the 148th Artillery Brigade, we are going to be calling out those heroes at the front who continue to make certain that the world is free. So to those in the 209th, 
Battalion of the Kharkiv Defense Forces, 113th Territorial Defense Forces Brigade, who are fighting on the Eastern Front. Thank you for making certain that liberation is Ukraine. Have a wonderful weekend. Stay tuned to our Twitter account at Sarah Ashton LV, along with any breaking broadcast that will come about as needed. Slava Ukraini. May God bless our troops, our pilots, our sailors, and all those people of this glorious nation who are standing strong in the face of Russian aggression.